Hi, guys. Man, this is crazy. Uh, happy Friday. It's June 1st. I can't believe it. First day of June and the first day of hurricane season. Uh, I am with my great friend, um, insurance master. I called you insurance guru earlier. We're going to come up with something every time. Uh, Mike Lublin with Brightway Insurance. Uh, we are going to talk a lot about insurance, not your flashlight needs, not your supply needs. Uh, Genevieve, let us know. Hey, Genevieve, let us know you can hear us or see us. Um, we're gonna and ask your questions, but all insurance related questions. Mike's not gonna tell you what kind of lumber to get um, or any of that, and I certainly will not be able to tell you how to, what lumber to get. Uh, but let us know you can hear us or see us. I think I got some thumbs up. Tracy Stein is on, Jeff's on. Good to see you guys. Uh, welcome, my friend. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited to have you and the kick uh, an insurance. What a br it was a very bright, get it, bright <laughs> way, a bright idea to talk about insurance on the day that we launch. Hurricane season, which is crazy. Even though we've all had, a, we've all dealt with Alberto and some. Alberto way, wanted to come early to the party. Yeah, this Alberto year. didn't understand the rules. Is the problem. And why did we? So uh, welcome. And I'm, we're going to get you. into all your past and your history. But I have a quick question. Why did we call Alberto subtropical storm? Is it because it was before June first? I should know this. I've been an insurance agent for twenty thousand years. I believe the reason why is because the storm did come before hurricane season, but I also believe it did not start in the tropics. It started uh, pretty much in the Gulf oh, of Mexico. Oh, so I gotcha. that's the reason why. It, did, it, was, it didn't start in a tropical region, it started in a subtropical Hence, region. Hence, subtropical. Jen Waterman, hey, I did not know you're a PNC agent. Craig Eisenstark is a PNC agent, uh, a fraternity Hello. brother of mine, down all state, still all state, right, Craig? Right. Uh, but uh, this is an important topic for us to talk about. The uh, hurricanes, the Hurricane Center just did a revised um, number of named storms uh, to six, or six hurricanes, I'm sorry, uh, from the larger one earlier in the year. But I, sometimes, I, this is my personal opinion as an insurance agent, I hate it when they do that because I feel like it brings everybody's guard down. And, you know, named storms are still powerful, unnamed storms are still powerful, and tropical storms are still powerful, and they do a lot of damage. So. Uh, don't get your guard down, um, but let, let's learn about Mike, because we want to know, and then he's going to answer all your questions, I promise. Um, so tell us a little bit about you. What's your background? I just learned how to say his last name today, because apparently I've been saying it wrong in my head the whole time. I've been with uh, Brightway Insurance for the past uh, 14 years. Uh, in fact, I was the first franchisee of Brightway, which has now grown to about 100, 120 offices nationwide, not wow. just, in, just not in the state of Florida. We have Brightways in, uh, I would say, probably 15 states, you know, as far away as Michigan, Texas, California, Colorado. So you were the first French franchisee, right? I was the first franchisee. For the whole correct, thing? For the whole thing. I See, I learned that earlier today. I'm still amazed that I didn't know that because I didn't read the bio. It was terrible. <laughs> Thanks, Ida, for sending it, though. Uh, that's, so what made you decide at that moment in time? Had you been a PNC agent before? I had never been a PNC agent before. Oh my uh, God. Luckily, uh, one of my best friends growing up and also my college roommate, David Miller, uh, had just bought a nationwide agency and I was moving down to uh, Orlando and uh, he said, uh, how'd you like to come work for me and open up a satellite office? And I said, yeah, sure. that sounds great. What I mean, selling homeowners and auto insurance, that's that's selling a uh, that's selling a need. It's not selling a want. So Correct. it's a lot. <laughs> People misunderstand. That's true. That's true. So it's not that you have to explain why you need homeowners insurance or why you need an auto policy. Right. It makes it a lot easier to uh, it really to does. sell that. It really so does. you know, at that point, you want to look at value and you want to look at price, which is very very. Important. But how did how did you determine what were, what was the what are some of the factors to launch into a, as the very first agent? Um, that must have taken some time to consider. I mean, that's a leap of faith, right? Which obviously yeah. has paid off because he's still with Brightway all these years later. And it's, a, it's grown and it's an amazing company. Um, but what, what, what were the things that made you go, all right, I'm going to do it? Uh, mainly Hurricane Andrew, to be honest with you. I saw that uh, there's great opportunity in the state of Florida to, uh, to go and to not only uh, insure down here, but also educate and also make sure that people have the right coverage that they're not being skimped on or you know, they understand their deductibles. They understand uh, you know, what might be covered that you think is covered and actually is not covered unless you have an endorsement to the policy and some companies will not even cover it at all. Right. So it's And it's very it's hard. Like so a lot of people we've all been through it. We forget though, like we forget a lot of things in our country, right? So you, the last time we had anything major 
I don't even remember. We could have had one. Well, we had Irma. Everybody dealt with Irma, and it was um, we had a lot of damage. I remember it coming through, and of course, our, I was just telling Mike that our fence, um, we're finally at a place where we think we're going to get that fence replaced, and that was in September that Irma hit, and we're in June. So imagine uh, the homeowners that are going through stuff that are still working out the claims, and if you don't know your coverage, which, how could you? And that's the difficult part that I think it's hard to explain, because you see this little coverage sheet, right? It's called your deck page or deck declarations page, and you read those covers, I'm like, oh good, I've got, I only have a 2% hurricane deductible. So let's talk about that, because I think a lot of people misunderstand what that means. Yes, a 2% hurricane deductible does not mean 2% of the damage is what you have to pay. Correct. What a 2% hurricane deductible is, is that you have to look what the, what on, it's called coverage A, which is your dwelling coverage on the house. Let's say you have a $100,000 house, we'll make it very easy, um, when you have a 2% hurricane deductible. What that means is that 2% of 100000 is $2,000. That's what you're going to pay if there's any hurricane damage to the house. That's your hurricane deductible. Now I'm gonna use two examples. First example, you have $1,500 in damage from a hurricane. There's no reason for you to go and make a claim because the insurance company's not gonna pay anything because you're below the threshold of $2,000. So there's no reason to make a claim at the $1,500 if you have $1,500 worth of damage. Right. Second, uh, second scenario, let's say you have $3,000 worth of damage. Well, at that point, it does, make it, it, it does make sense to call the insurance company because the insurance company is going to cover $1,000 of that claim. They're not gonna cover, of course, the $2,000 because the $2,000 comes out of your pocket still. And you know what, what happens a lot with the claims too is you get an estimate, remember those are estimates. And so once they get in and dig in, if you're over the threshold, like the example Mike just said, uh, and you're at 3,000, so you know they're gonna pay at least 1,000 of that. Once they start digging in, you could get into the four range, the five range, and so make sure that you really do um, talk to your insurance agent always about this, and then have them work with you in the claims office, because you just never know. As you get further into it, you're, you might see more damage that the person didn't see that was doing the estimate. Um, or they might get super busy and you have to get a brand new estimate and the new estimate could be different because it's been two to three weeks since the old estimate was. I mean, you guys have all lived through it. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir right now. Um, but on the hurricane deductible, can we talk about the 2%? Is every company, is it a named storm? Does it matter if it's tropical storm or hurricane or is each company different? Almost all companies, I think all companies will, if you have a tropical, not a tropical depression, if you have a named storm, so let's say subtropical storm Alberta, let's use Alberta because it just happened. Um, it's a tropical storm, it's a named storm, which means that if you had any damage from that storm, your hurricane deductible would have kicked in. Now, let's say that it was uh, you know, a tropical wave, uh, tropical wave is not a named storm, which means you're all other perils. Let's say you have a $1,000 deductible and you had damage, that would be what would pay out. Right, so, and that's yeah. so important for you to understand the difference there. So if it gets a name, now sometimes they're naming stuff like tropical depression after the fact. I don't know the answers to these questions and maybe you don't either, but like you, it's been a storm and then all of a sudden it reforms and now it's tropical depression, Anna, um, or Barry or whatever B is this year. I wonder if, I, does that come under it? Or it's if it, still, if it's a named storm, It's yes. still named, right? Still so named. you guys yes. have to be super careful it's of your named. coverage. That's important. And isn't this a good time of year um, to really review your coverages with uh, your insurance agent? I mean, I, I used to, we used to send stuff out, like please ask us the questions now instead of the day of a hurricane supposed to hit or uh, the week out and you think you have coverage and you don't and the company shut down, which you guys have probably all experienced too. I highly suggest that you call your insurance agent if you have any questions after this. And also, this is a great time to call your insurance agent. Usually if there's a storm coming, the insurance agent is not going to readily be there to help you. Right. And so right now, we have a calm before the storm. You know, your agent or th his support team will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Plus, you're not going to have a two, three hour wait time. Which is right, because now is the time to really review it. Now, Jen mentioned flood insurance. I've got a couple of questions before you get into the policy that I really want to talk about. Um, flood insurance. So 
Flood is water that rises from the outside in or up, correct? This is not correct. water damage. And I think a lot of people misunderstand that. So if the roof caves in and the water pours in, that's not flood. No, that would be covered by your hazard insurance. Right. But flood insurance, just rising because you're in waters. a rising waters. You're, let's say, though, that they tell you, because this is what happens. You get a mortgage, you're already tight, you want to close, uh, but you're in Florida, by the way, and you're only a C or an X, and I'm assuming those are still the right ones. C well, and yeah, X. A and A are also uh, big ones, and also V on the coast. So and so, different. But if you are, if they tell you, we well, are not in a flood zone, that's always, that used to be my favorite. Yes, we're you're all in a, in a flood zone. We're all in a flood zone, trust me. But that is, and it's not an expensive coverage to get, even if, especially if you're in one of those uh, preferred. Talk a little bit about that, because I think people misunderstand and they're like, well, the, it's not worth the $250. Trust me, if that water's rising, it's worth the $250 when you're sitting there watching it go up and coming into your house. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. First off, um, if you know anybody in Houston, they learned the hard way from Hurricane Harvey. Yep that they did not have flood insurance, that, that did not have flood insurance. Now, the thing about flood insurance is, is flood insurance is covered by FEMA. So it's, a, it's an additional policy that you would have to purchase. No homeowner's company covers rising water floods. You know, you, you might have a company out there that might do a deal with a private insurance company that may do it, but they, it's, it's a supplemental policy. Right. It's an additional policy that you're gonna have to get. So uh, this is what happens. First off, if you want a flood policy, do it now, because oh my God, yes. there's a 30-day wait. That's right. If you um, if you uh, have if you don't have flood insurance, which means if uh, Irma is on its way, you're probably not going to be able to get it because it's going to be here within 10 days. Right. So getting flood insurance at that time, you know, you're, you're, it'll be good. You'll have it moving forward, but you're going to miss out on it if the storm's already in the water and is coming. Yeah. That's why they have the 30 days, so that people aren't rushing to get it and then cancel it afterwards. You can get it. Explain to them a little bit and tell me if this is true. I'm, I'm used to be an insurance agent. I'm still licensed, so I know a little bit, but not as much, nowhere near as much as Mike. Can you still, at a closing, <clears throat> get it immediately? It doesn't have to wait for 30 days. Closing is no wait. That's, what, that's one of the things, is that if you have a closing going on so if you're a real estate agent um, you know loan officer and you know that a storm's coming it's probably best to uh, say hey you know what you should call the person doing your insurance and probably get a, a flood quote it might cost a little bit more than a dollar a day to get right however if you know again you're moving here it's a hundred year floodplain which what that means is is that they check for the past hundred years what the uh, what the rising waters are now not going to say anything, but like if you live in Lake Nona, what was out there a hundred years ago? You know, maybe you might be lucky if you have cattle out there, but there was nothing out in Lake Nona. It's not like living in Boston or New York City where people already knew, hey, you know what, we can go and we can do a hundred year floodplain and we know where, you know, where the water's coming from. Right. And they're pretty, you know, they can pretty much make a pretty good idea, estimate of you know which is in a preferred flood zone and which is in a high risk flood zone and not to give a hard time to the builders or the planners but i remember when we lived out in eastwood which is uh waterford lakes that area um the what the the drainage um was a challenge and the water rose if it rained in an afternoon right so imagine that you've got this massive storm when francis hit i think we were we were downtown by then Francis just stayed over us, this is 2004, just over us for like days on end and just rained and rained. And so if that water rises in from there, if it rises up, it doesn't matter if it's bad planning or bad drainage or bad sewage or whatever it's rising it is, water. it's rising water. So you may not be in, you may be in a preferred zone, but I'm telling you that the way things are planned and the way that some of these communities are planned, if you've seen it on a regular rainy day and you go, oh my God, I can't believe how much that water has risen, you need to get flood insurance before the storms come because that's, that, that, I saw that hit so many people in 2004. Oh, yeah. Well, the other thing I'm going to tell you, FEMA will help you uh, restore your home. If there is, if it's, you know, FEMA will come in, they, if you do get flooded, they will uh, you know, give you the money. The only difference between having a flood policy is, is that it's a loan to FEMA, which means 
if you already have a two hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage, you might get another two hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage to uh, if you didn't have flood insurance. Where flood insurance costs you maybe uh, I think it, right now it's about four sixty five a year for two hundred fifty thousand in coverage <coughs> and a hundred thousand for your personal articles. Wow. Maybe a little bit more or less. Uh, <laughs> I don't have my computer right here to tell you exactly, but that's in a preferred flood zone. That's preferred. Yes. All right, so, Linda Guzman says hi to you. She didn't say hi to me, though. Hey, Linda. Linda. I don't know what's happening there. Um, hi, Linda. Jen Waterman wants to know, what's your favorite thing about being an insurance agent? Uh, my favorite thing is uh, being able to uh, help my clients. Help. Uh, I, love, I love the real estate industry. I, I really do. I love helping people get to get their first homes or helping them or helping loan officers or realtors close their homes um, we try to be proactive you know it's uh, we have realtors calling me all the time saying hey can I get a quote just so I can let somebody know what the insurance is going to be and we can pretty much get them a quote that they can go in and, and tell their uh, tell their prospective buyer hey this is what it's going to cost you or helping them do certain inspections that are going to lower their uh, lower the cost of the insurance and they're still getting a great policy. One of those things is what's called a wind mitigation inspection. And uh, that can that in some of the older homes could cut your policy in half. It's amazing, guys. And you should really check it out. And then most of the time your insurance agency has preferred vendors for that. So it's not like you have to Correct. search on your own and go look for windmit.com um, or anything on Google. Now you've got a couple people that came on. Mark Sleeper, which must be a friend of yours. Hey, said, what's up, can Sleeper? I get, can I get earthquake insurance in Florida? He's kidding. He said, hey, yeah, Mike. Mark's in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, hey, God Mark, bless what's you, going Mark. on? Um, and then before we move to the zero deductible policy, a lot of times people forget that autos, vehicles, are also impacted by hurricane season. And so um, explain to them a little bit about what coverage would kick in. Let's say a tree falls on your car um, that is a coverage you have to think about in Florida, especially uh, during hurricane season, because your your home policy is not going to cover it outside. Well, I'll let you explain. Uh, that it, with an auto policy, uh, a lot of times uh, people don't are not aware that they have what's called comprehensive coverage, which means that you have not been in a uh, moving accident, you haven't been in a collision. For example, if a tree falls on your house. That would be covered under your comp uh, comp claim. You know, you see these all state commercials where mayhem is sitting there. You know, you see exploding cars, <laughs> right. you see trees falling. They're that would funny. be covered under your comprehensive coverage. Um, which and the great thing about comp coverage is, is that you can get a very low deductible, maybe a hundred dollars, yep. and it may cost you maybe two three dollars a month more. A lot of people don't know that, but if a hurricane hits. You already have all this uh, damage to your house. The last thing you want to do is come out another five hundred dollars for a kind, you know, for a tree falling on your right. car. So th that's one of the things that you may want to check with uh, your insurance agent about maybe getting a lower comp deductible. Get the lower. I, I mean, I agree too. Get, really review it with them because it's such a small difference in pre annual premium or six month premium. Also, on the comp coverage. Are you required, and this is a question, are you required to have collision? What if you don't want the collision, the car is older, uh, but you want comp? Can you have one or the other? Right now, with the companies I deal with, no. You have, you have to have, to have both. both. You know, and again, you can have a higher collision deductible. Most most people have a $500 collision deductible, right. sometimes up to 1000 The nice thing about a collision deductible is if it's not your fault and the other, if the other person does have insurance, you're not going to pay anything because that's the covered under their property damage, right? Yeah, that's that covered under their insurance policy. Yes. Now, if they don't have insurance, and your company has to pay. You might have an yeah. issue with the. Uh, but take a look model. at your comp collision, especially your comp coverage, because that covers everything but a collision. So everything that happens to your car outside of a collision is going to be covered under comp. But if you don't have comp coverage, it doesn't matter if that tree falls during a hurricane. You're going to have to replace that car all by yourself because it's not going to be covered under your homeowner's policy. Uh, Jen says she particularly enjoys meeting older mobile home buyers, so much history. <laughs> um, oh I mean, God bless you, Jen, because I do, I mean, that's the, that's the interesting thing about our state is that mobile homes, we are a big mobile home community statewide, Correct. and yet after Andrew came through and literally decimated the entire state, including every mobile home park in its path, 
um, mobile homes became very difficult to write. Even the new ones that basically cost $150,000, manufactured homes or whatever they call them, prefab now, they, got, they have all sorts of new names. But that is a challenge still, right? It it's is, but market. I'll tell you, if you're gonna buy a mobile home nowadays, try to get a mobile home that's been built after 2002. Or if not, get a mobile home, you're gonna to wanna to get a thorough inspection, possibly a four point inspection for an older home. You still might be able to get into what's called a standard company, which is gonna be a lot less and it's gonna offer a lot more to your insurance than having to go into a non-standard company or the Florida Insurance Company Citizens. So it's Citizens. something, it's really something for you to, uh, to really consider when you are purchasing a mobile home. I always tell people, you can get them 2002 and newer, go for it. We, the, the market is open for those homes. All right, Jen, I love Jen's questions. Tell about no fault insurance. Some folks think it's, think it's more than just uh, for medical expenses. No fault insurance. Uh, what this this is a no fault state. <laughs> what a no fault state means is that uh, the first uh, ten thousand dollars goes through your insurance company, and then the insurance companies go to each other in a process called subrogation. So it makes it easier. You don't have to call. You don't have to call someone else's insurance company to, to do this. But understand that what that what no fault means is that it doesn't matter if that person rear-ended you on a DUI, a blah, 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 your, because it's a no-fault uh, state, the first 10,000 of the medical coverage, and it's an 80-20 policy, but there's all sorts of things. 80% of your medical is covered. But, but, it's but it has to go through your policy. So when you get really super mad about that, understand that that's not the insurance agent's fault or the insurance company. We're a no-fault state. And so that is how it's mandated here. Uh, and it's, it's almost sunsetted a few times since I've been in the business. Yes. Um, and we're, but not every state in the nation is a no-fault state. No, a lot of states aren't. Um, one of the things is, is that as far as uninsured motorists go, probably I would say close to 25% of people on the road probably don't have any insurance or they're very underinsured. So it's very, very important that, you know, not only do you have the insurance, uh, the no fault, but you also have what's called uninsured motorist insurance or underinsured motorist insurance in case you are in an accident. Because if you, what you probably don't know, so let's let's take out the people who just don't get insurance and hope for the best, right? I don't know how they get their vehicle registered every year, but they get the vehicle registered and they cancel the policy. We've all probably dealt right. with them had an accident. But to get your policy, you don't, unless it's changed, you don't have to have bodily injury. You only have to have PIP and PD, which is personal injury protection and property damage. Which is the PIP is the no fault. Right. And property damage, you know, up to $10,000. So it's really, it's not gonna cover a lot, especially nowadays when a car costs twenty twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000. And let's say you don't have a comp or collision coverage on your car. You know, it's not gonna pay for it's, uh, it's another It's really car. bad. All right. So Jeff, hey Jeff Reyes, we were just talking about you today. What's, What's up, up Jeff? Buddy? How long can a policyholder wait to file a claim? Is there a statute of limitations? Um, there really isn't a statute of limitations. However, if, if you have a storm that comes through and you kind of have that inkling that something happened, you may want to still just have somebody come out, even a handyman, just come out and kind of take a look or, or go up to your roof and take pictures just to make sure. I mean, there, you know, a lot of people came with hailstorms, and two or three years later, they're they're having these claims, and it makes it a lot harder to to go, and it takes a lot more time because they have to do their due diligence, the insurance company. Where if a hailstorm does occur afterwards, you go up there and you see the pock marks and everything. Probably is a good idea to uh, give a call to somebody, get a, get an estimate, and then call your. Uh, insurance carrier if it's over. And you know, you have, <clears throat> you may or may not know this, I don't think this has changed either. You have a responsibility as the insured to uh, mitigate, meaning to minimize your, so if something's going on, let's say you have the roof damage and the water is pouring in, you just can't sit there with a cocktail and watch the water pour in. Correct. You have a responsibility to cover your furniture, to uh, figure out how to mitigate that or minimize the damage that's going on. So. Uh, there's not necessarily a statute of limitations, but as the insured, you just can't sit there and watch the damage get worse. You have to figure out, you have to at least try to do something. And that's in your policy somewhere, or it's in the law. Let me give you another example. Let's say that you have a hailstorm hits today, and you have a 12-year-old roof, okay? It's just regular shingled roof. Most companies, after the roof is 15 years old, 
they're, it's going to be very, very hard to, to make a claim three years later because they're going to say, well, the roof is 15 years old. It's already had a wear and tear. It's already gotten its life expectancy. So again, it's better if you think, you know, if you have hail, just go up and check. That's the one thing that I would say that people are really not that sure of. And that's the one thing I would always, I would always tell you. You know if a tropical storm or hurricane comes through, but you know, right. a hailstorm, you know, can happen. You know, sometimes maybe even a tornado if it hits. Even if it's, you know, miles away, you still might want to take a look because you might have had a, uh, a projectile that Correct. came and did something to the roof. And you might not be able to see it. So it's always a couple of times just to be, uh, just to have some due diligence. And it makes it a lot easier when you're filing a claim. All right, so talk, so we've talked a lot. I love it because <laughs> this is important. I think people, we don't have enough conversations with people and then they want to have the conversation when it's happening or it just happened. So again, I encourage you to re reach out to Mike, Ida, reach out to everybody who's at Mike's office. Uh, if you want to reach out to your agent, please reach out to somebody because hurricane season is upon us and you want to be prepared and know your stuff. So let's talk about this zero uh, deductible policy, this, this, it, which is fat. They didn't have this in my day. Um, and I love it. So give them some idea about what this is about. Okay. It's what this is. I'm going to just show you real quick. This is called a cat for home policy. What this is, it's a supplemental policy. And what it does is that it uh, mainly, it makes your hurricane deductible go away. You have a zero hurricane deductible with this. So let's go back real quick. I'm going to go back to the first scenario. Let's say that you uh, have a $100,000 house, you have a 2% hurricane deductible, which means you have a $2,000 deductible. Let's say you have $1,500 worth of damage, okay? All you have to do is give them a call and they will pay that $1,500. So that means that you have a zero hurricane deductible. Right. In the second scenario, let's say you have the $3,000 worth of damage. You know, the insurance company is gonna pay 1,000 this policy is gonna pay the other 2,000. so awesome. Now the other thing that this does cover, it does cover what your uh, hurricane deductible reimbursement is, but it covers a couple other things that, uh, that are pretty neat. So cool. One, if you're in a mandatory evacuation area, like say that you know, you're by the beach and everything and you have to leave, it'll give you $500 in, uh, in coverage, which means that you know, if you have to stay in a hotel for a few days, you know, do gas or what, whatever, it's gonna cover $500 of your evacuation cost, even if you haven't had any damage on your home. Um, it will also cover up to $500 for a generator rental. So if you're out of power, and I mean, I, I remember a lot of people uh, after Charlie, especially uh, south of downtown, oh were out God. of par power for a few weeks, you know. Insane. It's a $500 equipment reimbursement, you know, so you can have the lights on in your house. Um, debris removal. Most homeowners insurance companies will not pay for debris removal, and that's a, something you're going to have to come out of pocket. This policy will pay you $1,000 for debris removal, so it makes it a lot easier that you can hire somebody else to remove the debris instead of having to be out there yourself. Um, it also pays $1,000 for carport and or screened enclosure. Make sure you check on your policy. If you have a screen enclosure or if you have a carport that you have the uh, endorsement on there. Because if you don't have the endorsement, it's not gonna pay for it, you know? Right. And I mean, $1,000 is great here, but I don't know too many uh, places that would uh, pay for the $1,000. Nope. I also believe that they also pay for screens, screen damage, which even if you have the endorsement, they won't pay for screens getting blown out. So this is also something that you're going to want to remember. You're dealing at. with the deductible on your other policy. So if you just have a screen blown out, right? The two percent, your, your chances are you're never going to hit that two percent, even at a hundred thousand. Remember, it's two percent of cover J, which is your house value according to the insurance policy. So two grand, you're not going to. How are you going to? It would be have to be catastrophic or pretty big Correct. to hit two thousand in screen damage. So this covers a thousand of that, which you aren't going to get anywhere with the other policy. Correct. Um, it also covers a thousand dollars worth of fences. Now, uh, Ted and I just had this Ooh, talk. Yeah. Ted had a little bit of an issue because his fence, quote unquote, was not considered to be attached to the house, and the insurance company buried it way in the back. And uh, unfortunately, Ted had to fight them, but he did get the coverage. He did get the, the claim, but. Uh, Again, the, it gives you $1,000 in fence coverage if the, the fence is Listen to me up. about fence really fast. Uh, most policies, apparently, 
of somewhere on page 96 or 97 of your policy, it has to be physically bolted or attached to the house. That doesn't mean bumped up or buttressed up or whatever the word is, up to the house. That means physically attached. So if your fence is just sitting all pretty around your pool and it's not attached to your house, if you have a claim and that fence gets torn down, you are out of luck. There is no coverage for you. So make sure you really take a look at that and then take a look at this policy that Mike's talking about because I've been fighting this and discuss, and fighting's an unfair word. I've been discussing this with my insurance carrier since Irma hit in September. So we're at June now, and we're finally at, I think, hopefully, prayerfully, uh, resolution point. So make sure you know that. You think everything's covered, and it's not. I'm just telling you, it's not coverage. It's not covered. If you have computer, which at some point I'd love to talk about computer equipment, maybe you need to come back. But you also have policy limits on certain things. So I'm real happy that you just spent 10 grand on a new entertainment center and it includes 45 different computers and it's all beautiful. But I tell you, if it's not scheduled, and we could talk about that at some point, then you have a small policy limit that's only going to cover up to maybe a thousand thousand dollars. So good luck to you trying to figure. Oh, don't forget your deductible in that. So Correct. Uh, <laughs> just listen to me. You have to talk to your insurance agent's office. Talk to the professionals there and review your coverages. Review them. This is the time to do it. We don't have anything in the tropics right now that I'm aware of. Call them. Call them next week. Get on the phone and talk to them and engage them. That's what they're there for because trust me, they'd rather have this conversation with you now than while they have 500 calls online trying to figure out what coverage they have and what they don't Correct. Have. Um, all right, any parting words of wisdom for them? Because we're already at 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, past you know, 30 minutes, which I'm going to just show you one of the two, th do. two more things on this, this policy, okay? First off, it has what's called a Lloyd's certificate. So this policy is underwritten by Lloyd's of London, which means that it's pretty much underwritten by the largest insurance carrier in the world. And uh, again, they are notorious for paying claims very, very quickly, which is a good thing. It's, a good thing. <laughs> it's it not is. a bad thing. Uh, also, one other thing I also want to show with this customer, because this is one of my greatest things that I did for this customer is, he had a $30,000 hurricane deductible. He has a million and a half dollar home. He has a 2% hurricane deductible. Um, he had $45,000 worth of damage. Um, he made the claim to Lloyd's. Within 10 days, he got his payment. He got the full payment. He got $30,000. The insurance company paid the extra $15,000. So he came out paying nothing. Now, granted, this is an older home. He paid $570. Look at, listen to that, that premium. $570 for, uh, for a $30,000 hurricane limit plus the coverage B schedule. The other thing is if you have a newer home, uh, probably 2010 forward, most of these coverages are not going to cost you more than $200 a year. But it's going to cover your, uh, but it is going to cover your hurricane deductible. And most hurricane deductibles at 2% in Central Florida, you're looking at about a $5,000 deductible. Yeah. So a couple, you know, a couple hundred dollars, you know, to, to uh, make sure that you have that peace of mind and that you're going to get paid out quickly, it, it, it's definitely worth it. And if you've suffered through anything, tropical storm, hurricane, you know that you just want the peace of mind. It might, you might think 500 sounds like a lot now, but when you've got the 2% hurricane deductible and your insurance carrier is going denied because it's under your deductible, you're gonna wanna have a policy. And remember, that's $500 for an older home that's, uh, that has a million and a half insurance. So again, this was a, a great deal to, you know, for a $30,000 pay, you know, to get paid, I mean, he would have to, uh, he would have had to have this policy for, uh, what is it, I think 60 years before, uh, you know, before right? he evened out. Oh yeah, I hadn't even thought so, of that. So, you know, so again, this, you know, I, I'm not saying he hit the jackpot, but he definitely didn't have to come out $30,000 in uh, 2017. That's a peace of mind policy, people, and if you live in Florida, that's what we all really want here, because you just never know. All right, any parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you want to share with them? We're obviously going to share all of Mike's contact information, how to reach out to him in his office. Um, we're going to post that. His wonderful wife, Ida, who's on, I see her on um, the screen right now. She's going to help with that. Uh, anything you want to share with them before we head out for the afternoon? Uh, yeah, just, you know, again, you watch Channel 2, you watch Channel 9, you see, uh, you know, all the hurricane preparedness packs that they come out with. You have to make sure insurance is also should be part of that. 
And, uh, you know, just a couple of things. When you have a declarations page, see if you, most companies now will just uh, send it to you via email. Just make sure you store it. It's going to be easy for you to call up the claim service. And if everything's down, you know, you can always find a Kinko's and be able to call and you'll have your coverage right there. Um, also, um, if you ever need a second opinion, let me know. I'll be more than happy to, uh, to help good. you and uh, tell you. And uh, again, you know, one of the nice things is, is being in this business for 14 years, my second favorite thing I like to do is uh, consult and help people with their insurance. And many times I tell people to stay with, they, stay with what they have. They have, great, they have great coverage, but you know, it always helps to have a second opinion. And my email and my phone is always, uh, is always on to uh, give me a call. Oh yeah, and Ida just posted that. I think that's your home phone. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she would not. Or she just gave her well, cell number. No, no, number. no. I give my cell number out as well. That's the other thing. I mean, to me, I'd rather give my cell number out. Now, if you call me between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., good chance it's going to go to voicemail. <laughs> but, you know, any time after that, you know, I'll be more than happy to uh, awesome. answer any questions. All right. That was great. You guys, uh, reach out to him. I just posted everything. So text him, call him, email him, email the office. So we're going to post all of that later. Do it now. Do it. Do it this. Do it. It's Friday afternoon. Do it as soon as you can because you never know when that first storm is going to start to pop up, and you want to do it before then. It doesn't take that long to do a review of a of an insurance policy, really. So go through it with them. Really pay attention to the details. And Mike and Ida and their staff are amazing. So all right, man. Thank you for Thank having you me. Thank you so much. It was awesome. Um, happy June first. All right. We love you guys. I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs>